I think there's one important macro thing that I would want to point out here. And like what didn't happen in 2020 and 2021 is we didn't get the sort of permanent black swan event that permanently increased e-commerce adoption by 10 or 12 years, like some analysts thought that we would. But what has happened is e-commerce growth has reverted to the pre sort of 2020 trend line, but that trend line was only ever going up and to the right. Um, so the aggregate growth rates of our industry are, are, are here. Um, you know, the broader macro around consumer spending and how folks feel about inflation, like who knows where that settles out. Um, but I, I still think of e-commerce and a lot of, and this is good for Amazon on two fronts, like e-commerce as a share of overall spend in GDP is still kind of where like cloud computing is versus on-prem enterprise. Like if you're in our business, it feels like everybody and their mother is doing every purchase online, um, but there's still a massive amount of, of, of you know, products moving through, not just physical retail, but various types of old school means that I think will start to be cap be captured by, uh, by our ecosystem. Uh, again, much like it feels like the whole world is on the cloud, but most Fortune 1000 companies are still running out of a, a server stack somewhere 10 miles away from the office. Um, so it's hard to feel like the space is early when, you know, you know, you've certainly been in it for a while. I've been in it for a decade. Most folks listening to this will have been in the space for a while. But if you take a step back, it's still a pretty early industry. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, the, there's only one number that you need to look at in terms of where it is today and how it's trending in terms of how far this can go. And that is e-commerce as a percentage of total retail. And it's still minuscule, and it grows in, in leaps and bounds year over year. And in, in five years, it, it, the amount of jump it had in the past five years, even if you take out the COVID situation, it's still huge. Before COVID, it was growing fast, and even after COVID, it's uh, so... There is still plenty of room for growth, and I don't see that going away. And also retail doesn't know what the future of retail is going to look like. right? So there's so many things, and uh, I don't see that uh, opportunity is going to be um, you know, a challenge, but obviously you have to know what you're doing. So, um, yeah. okay. Um, well, I'll give you one, one fun data point, though. I'll, give you, I'll put you on the spot with a question. Yeah. Um, there are several traditional brick and mortar retailers whose stock has outperformed Amazon over the last five years. So Amazon's been up about 80% over the last five years, probably a little more now, probably 85%. Um, there are a few old school retailers whose stock has done better. You want to take a guess, see if you can get any of them? No idea. Tell me which ones. So there are a few. One is Ulta Beauty. Uh, oh. One is Dick's Sporting Goods, up, up almost 200% on a five-year window. TJ Maxx, um, and the real winner, Tractor Supply. Um, so it's funny. There's still weird things in our ecosystem, right? As much as you feel Amazon's dominating, and they are, um, it's still a robust kind of environment. This is in stock price. You're this is in stock price over the last five years. So it's not a perfect metric by any means. 